All right, we live, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Peace, peace. So we got a special guest tonight. Want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, world. It's Kachur from KP. Kachur the Phenomenal, two brands in the train, and brilliant minds out of North Carolina. So what's up? What's up? Mr. Swagger Don, how you doing tonight? Oh man, I'm feel, I'm, feel, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I, there's a lot of things going on right now. You know, got my battle this weekend. I'm feeling real confident. You know what I mean? I'm in my right, battle. Right, right. True, true, true. So let's let's well, first off let's address um first off let's just address I guess the audience, the fans, and stuff like that um about um. Mr. Tony Jordan, he was supposed to make an appearance tonight. Uh, yep. Swag, you wanna you wanna go ahead and take that? Well, okay. Mr. Tony Jordan was supposed to was supposed to join us tonight. Um, due to some, uh, I'm trying to find the right words to use. Uh, because of technical difficulties on on Mr. Jordan's end, uh, he's not with us right now at this time. I'm hoping. Before the end of the show, he might, you know, might might make an appearance or whatever case may be. If not, no love lost. But we were supposed to have him here on the show today. We were supposed to be talking about a lot of topics revolving around uh, um, his success in the music industry. Him also managing uh, Jazzo, uh, who uh, a lot of y'all should be familiar with. Jazzo being uh, Jay Z's ex partner uh, mm -hmm. before Jay Z making his big leap out to you know. Rockefeller, whatever the case may be, uh, just giving a little backstory. But um, like I said, he's hoping to join us. He, he's he's not here with us tonight so far. But uh, we'll see how the night how the night turns out. Tonight's gonna be a special show, though. We're gonna, we gonna right. we call this a dedication show. We're gonna dedicate this one to the fans tonight. So anybody that's watching the show and wants to uh, has an opinion or wants to chime in on anything that we're talking about, do hit us up in the inbox. Uh, for the page, and we'll we'll kindly uh, send you the link to come on the show. Come chop it up with us. Right, right. So let's let's talk, let's talk about what's what's going on currently right now. Jacquees saying that he like the king of R and B of this generation. Why why you why your head went back? What happened? Well, that's a lie. <laughs> Not a lie. <laughs> it's it's a lie. You you come on. We all right. You said it's not a lie. Let me yeah. ask this question. Let me ask this question. I'm not all being right. a at all. Give me, give me three hot Jacquees songs that he didn't that he didn't remake of somebody else's song. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I'm just now. keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. What the is, man. Now, what that claim is, or who got in his head, or I think he just got hot and was feeling good because he on his wave right now. He doing his yeah. thing. I still that's what we claim, man. Like I don't tell this to nobody. But, you know, come on, man. I'm not gonna say the boy not hot. Right. The boy hot, good at what he do at all. I'm not taking nothing from him. But <laughs> I can the, the say the king of R and B at this time is horror. It's like the order to say that you would have to say everybody else that does R and B right now just doesn't exist. Like there's so many other people that exist right now, like uh Chris Brown. Um wait, hold up. Before Chris Brown, okay, and y'all know y'all know how I feel about this man, but before we get to even Chris Brown, what about R. Kelly? R. Kelly ain't dead yet. But and no, he's talking in this time and ever right now, and in, in this time and ever right now, R. Kelly is old. He an old nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nah, but it don't matter. <laughs> Kelly's still making if Kelly, Kelly's still making hits. They calling me old. And R. Kelly, oh, way older than me. Mm -hmm. He old. They not jacking him right now. He not part of this generation. He's not. They they him and you know who you know who they who they put in this generation. You know who's on their way out? Tyrese. Ty Tyrese Ty on his way out right now. When was Tyrese ever in? I mean, listen. No, 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 no. Of this generation, he's starting to be. He's like. He's like. He's in our era, so like in our era, right? Uh huh. Let's go. Let's go a little bit, a little bit deeper. You got the Al, you got the Al Greens. You got the, you know what I'm saying? Like the, like, like the big homies. 
as far as big homies go, Tyrese is kind of big homie status right now. He made some songs that made an impact on, gener on, on generations. So it's all Kelly, right? But I wouldn't put Tyrese in that category at all. At all. He got, he got, he got vocals, though. He has vocals. I'm not saying that doesn't take away from his talent. Right, but right. to put him in that bracket, nah. Tyrese ain't had enough hits for that. Dang. Uh, I don't know. He ain't had enough hits. Name, name five hits from Tyrese. That's sweet lady. Five, five hits? Yeah, sweet lady. Yeah. That's what I was a big jack. That's Cody. That's Cody. Yeah. It was on the bus with the Coca Cola joint. That's two. No, no, he didn't say the Coca Cola yeah. bus. I'm weak. He wrote the theme song. Hey. <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan, so I ain't going to even I, try that. Um, I got nothing else, y'all. I don't. I ain't yeah, gonna I'm going to try that. Yeah, I guess when you, all right, when you say it like that, all right. Same rule of <laughs> right? All mm -hmm. right. You said you said you said before Chris Brown. Why why we just why we just gonna take my man Chris Brown out of the game? We're not taking him out. I didn't say that, but I mean Kells, okay. Well, all right, I'll take Kells out. He is old now, okay. Fine. So we'll give it I'll take Chris Brown. Let's get technical. Put wait, hold on. I say Chris Brown. Leave R. Kelly I still okay. say Chris Brown. Chris Brown has more hits than R. Kelly. Officially. What? Hey. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know about that one. What? I don't know about that one. How many times? How many times has Chris Brown? I can Google it. How many times has Chris Brown went platinum? That boy is on fire. But so has R. Kelly though. Oh, um, R. Kelly hasn't had that one bad song. Not one. Not one out of his whole career. Not one bad song that has not been on either the top one hundred or top ten. Not one. But but did the young boy say why he thought he was the king of RB or he just made that defended that statement like I'm the king of RB or he, he just made the off? statement. He just felt like because of this generation, he feels like he's the king of R and B. What is what, what generation? Is huh? What do they gonna remember him for? I mean just like say like if I miss it, if we miss the three songs right now, right. what are they gonna remember Trey songs for? Trey songs was hot on the charts. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, we could throw him in that bracket. You know what I'm saying? Song, put put in his work. Um, yeah. Usher. Yeah. Put in yeah. his work. Yeah, yeah. Us, yeah. It's a lot yeah. more before Jacquees could ever get that title, to be honest with you. Yeah, I can't get out to him yet. I can't get out to him. That's like, that's like, that's like the whole thing with Remy Martin. Remember when Remy Martin just made that? Uh, <laughs> uh, she felt that Drake need to put in a little bit more work to be a legend. Right, she's right. Yeah, she's right. Not saying that he's not great, he's not super great, but to be a legend, he's done legendary. Shit, but well, first of all, first of all, he can't be a legend yeah. for the simple fact of he doesn't have any songs that are creatively his own. He's done covers of other people's songs. Not covers the other people's songs. They they're what rough. We song? I mean, that, I mean, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna be politically correct. He's only had one song that was creatively his. Right. That right. was the song with him and Dej Love. Mm. Okay. Mm. That's so, it. You still in Vegas? Huh? You still in Vegas? Say that again. You still in Vegas? That whole, that whole, uh, that whole first, that whole first project. Like we can't, we. Ev all right, I get what everybody saying with the whole Quentin Miller thing, but Quentin Miller didn't know Drake his whole career. So, so we say, so you saying you giving came, that to him? Songs came from somewhere. Um, um. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to discredit him. I'm not going to say. See, look. He didn't get. I'm not gonna. Say he didn't get help with a lot of songs. He did get help, but to say he didn't, to say he did not write them. He did not write them songs. I can't say that. But I look, see, listen. Andre stubs out in Oklahoma says Jacquees. He said until this nigga make an actual original project, he's nowhere to insert himself in anyone's king conversation. And I agree. That's exactly what I just said. He doesn't have an original song of his own. Who's the last person to call themselves the king of R&B? Let's, 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 Bobby Brown. 
Oh. Right. My whole point. Now, we have to we have to try to look at why these people try to jump out in the front and say I'm the king of R and B. Bobby Brown reason was he was on Rocks and Bloods. But but. <laughs> now I was gonna say then possibly either the ego tripping, you know, it's ego tripping or some promotion. Maybe it's because now I got everybody talking, so now will be the prime time and come out with a single or album. You know, now will be the time or uh, that that rank like why is hot. That's that's got everybody talking and pulling all the stars out of the world where it's not oh you can't be the now nah, he dropped a project and proved I ain't gonna say he's gonna prove the king, but now at the time he got that attention. That would be what I would think for marketing the promotion. Now would be the time. You got everybody talking, like a lot of people talking right now. So, so what, look, what if so Marcus either. Houston, what if Marcus Houston or Marion just popped out tomorrow and said, Yo, I'm the king of RB, fuck that. To be honest, I, I could see him say that. Yeah, you know how long Marcus Houston has been in the game? You know how many singles he's had, how many projects he has had, you know how many people he has written for and made hits for. I can see him put being put in that bracket. Before I put him in that bracket, I put R. Kelly in that bracket because R. Kelly wrote for the majority of the of art. That he I, wrote. I, I told you I didn't take R. Kelly out the damn bracket. But see, listen, this is the thing with Bobby Brown at the time. Bobby was hot. Bobby was hot everywhere. Bobby was hot. So he earned that title, if you think about it. Come on now. Nobody was expecting him to be the breakout star in New Edition back then. They had kicked him out. They had deemed him as an alcoholic, a druggie, all of that. And then what he do? He turned around. He came out with humping around and all this. Then he was on the... um. Um, what's that? that Ghostbuster soundtrack. Then you he went from that to, to Whitney and their album. Like he wasn't was went crazy. It went so crazy that Britney Spears did it years later. So yeah, that whole now nah, I'm talking about that whole album right there. That album from the intro to the outro was one of the hardest RB albums I ever heard in my life. I'm I'm not gonna hold you. Yeah, listen. Before I put Jacquees as the king of R and B, I will say JJ Icefish is the king of R and B. Okay. <laughs> now, see Andre. All right, I'm reading with Andre's comment about kind of like how Ti went out and claimed himself the king of the South for hip hop. I thought he was crazy since we all know Scarface and he didn't need to ever mention it. Mm. I, you know, I. Scarface has always been the the, un, the the unclaimed, untitled king in the South. You know what I'm saying? For all the right. work. But somebody had to step up and claim that name for themselves, being I'm 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 now, I'm doing this, I'm the one holding it down now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh with all respect do the cuz and all that at that moment in time when he said he was the king of the south, I didn't I didn't I didn't I couldn't stand behind him on that. I'm I'm not gonna hold you. At that point in time I, don't, I, don't have I, had, I had Luda. Luda Luda was putting out project after project after project and they was all hitting. All hitting. You got a valid point. I was like, ooh. And so when them two went at it. I had to stand back and say, "Ooh, let me see how this one turn out." And to me, yeah, it, was, right. it came to a standstill. So you can't take that from either one of them. If they both said, "Yo, we at that time we were both the king of the south," you got to give it to both of them. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't think. I, I think that he was way out of pocket with claiming king of R and B. I'm telling you, it's got people talking. It's either ego chip on the talk. I know there's a whole lot of many. I know there's other factors, but it's this is, this is it. If you don't drop name, he wasted that opportunity because now is the time to drop whatever it may be to dispute everybody. Like, if you're gonna drop an original project, are you gonna do another cover and eat it? I mean, now is the time to use that that momentum. I would, yeah. Right. I I don't know. I I don't know. I think he just need to sit that down. Let's 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 get a few more things out and and then maybe down the line try to claim that again down the line. Mm. Not right now. It's too soon. Yeah. It's too soon. 
happen. You still got Neo that came in through the game. Bruno Martin, Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear don't get enough record. He done, he done wrote from one twin. Like some of their biggest hits. Uh, what is it? M M D M A with a Pooh Bear. I think it's the brother's name, man. He done wrote for some of everybody in the industry, you know? Right. He's very reputable. The industry people know <laughs> very well. So I don't know. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He, I think he just jumped out the window with that. But look, we got a question for Cottrell. So Bonnie Vincent said, I know that you have a show called True Brilliance Presents. Can you let us know a little more about it and where to find it? Yes, ma'am. Great question. Uh, thank you, Queen V. Uh, yes, ma'am, Queen Jazz. Uh, True Brilliance Entertainment. Uh, all right. Uh, it's a it started as a production company. It's a production company, LLC, out of South Carolina in 2014. Uh, the goal behind True Brilliance, I named it after my sons. My son's names are True and Brilliance. So the company's True Brilliance. And um, I, I went out to Hollywood, uh, what, uh, about two years ago. Um, once I started this company in 2014, and I went out to Hollywood chasing what I thought was a dream, I guess, so to speak of. I, I had this ideology. If I wanted to do entertainment, I need to go to one of the meccas, which would have been New York, from uh, uh, L.A. or Tennessee, or, you know, uh, Tennessee, Nashville. So I chose L.A., went to Hollywood. With, I seen it was full of shit, full of you know, smoking mirrors. It's like basically it's like a meal fact. Like it's, uh, what I like to say is like shooting fish in a barrel. And, you know, so they got these kids out there and they pimping them out basically. Like it's the whole industry pimping these kids and, and these people that don't have the knowledge. So where I come in and where I, I thought that that, that uh, what is it, you know when you, uh, what is it, business you look for a weakness or an area for improvement, you try to find a resolve. So my resolve to combat that or to try to empower these artists is educating them, educating them. Like so they, they have this idea, oh I gotta get ready be a star or you know overnight it don't necessarily work with the internet yeah but it don't work like that you know you gotta you still gotta pay them dues there's a lot more that go with it so what you bridge possess um we, we partnered up with a company media kings out of durham north carolina he's one of my mentors he does tv um a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh television and he does network tv excuse me so we partnered up with him with my production company and then, uh we've been working together to uh, educate these artists and get them um some opportunities that they wouldn't normally get like you know just day to day or uh, what I'm trying to say, um, I'm rambling this shit now because it's a lot that basically um, we, we we try to we educate the artists and we, we uh, provide them the knowledge and opportunities to empower them so that they can have uh, better opportunities and, and they, they don't have to be uh, you know railroad and bullshit. You know, like any any time that we deal with an artist and uh, Queen V can tell you this, I try to if I don't know the answer, I try to make sure you get some reputable sources so you can cross reference and do your own educate. You know, you can get your own because uh, one two people can read the same shit and get different things from it. So I always try to get them, you know, empowered to give them the right information, the right links, and this is really trying to help these artists out because there's a lot of talent that gets overlooked, but whether it's money, supports, whatever various reasons, but it's a lot of great talent. It's it's a Michael Jordan out there that didn't get that right look. No, no disrespect to Michael Jordan, no disrespect to none of these players that got they, you know, but it's a Michael Jordan out there on that potentially was better than Mike, but they just didn't get that look for whatever reason, opportunity. We don't want that to occur on our watch. If we can help it. Put these artists, these people in the right place, and you know, the good people, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so in a nutshell, we're trying to help the people, like the people that don't that get ignored or overlooked. We we in the ghetto, we in the trenches, we in the gutter, looking for them. We're trying to help, and then with that opportunity, you know, come all it takes is the right person or the right company, the right brand to see them and provide them with opportunity. Right. So in, so in a nutshell, we, we we trying to, you know, we're just trying to get those those right artists the right look and all that blah blah. You no, know, that's it ultimately with that long winded explanation. <laughs> nah, but we appreciate that, and and you know, um, it's funny that you use um Michael Jordan as like as a not a analogy in that in that example, right? Because you said somebody being better than Michael Jordan was Lim Bias, Lim Bias, uh, Lim Bias played played Michael Jordan in that in that, in that final game, North Carolina versus Maryland, and Maryland wowed out. Lim Bias went crazy, and then never made it to the NBA because you know, unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, that's something before y'all can go to the NBA or whatever it's going to be. But now, if he had somebody that would have reached out to him, I mean, you, you talk about music, but if he would have had somebody that was that had something going on where they would have reached out to him and could have got to him, probably he could have been around since today. You know what I'm saying? So I, I ask, that's dope what you're doing, reaching out to those artists and, and working with them and educating them. You don't really have nobody doing that nowadays. And these kids be signing over their lives. The 360 deals and don't even know what they be doing. No clue. Right. No, no part of their music, no nothing. Just have just be getting railroaded and getting all their money taken from. Well, Andre Stubbs had an interesting comment. Um, he said, We're throwing this king of whatever phrase around far too long. Let your music do the talking. I agree with that statement. 
Mm. Nah, but you know what? At the same time, I agree with the statement. But people, everybody going to claim to be a king, though, because in, in music, it's like that's a. Uh, it, 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 it's like everybody wants this title. Everybody wants this entitlement to be like the best at, at it. So they, they, everybody walk around with this fake crown on. And like, right. That's like what it is with, with the whole battles, with the whole battles, and that's why like the um, battle battle rap is like really the essence of hip hop, because that's what it came from. It came from brothers just you know playing the dozens, playing the dozens, and being and having a way with words and how, and, and being able to do it and, and flow with it or whatever the case may be, and that turned into uh, an actual art. You know what I'm saying? So what we call today rap and hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So you know that's 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 all dope. dope. So I just put a so I just put a poll for everybody. Um, asking basically is ja, excuse me is Jacquees the king of R and B of this generation? So y'all vote on it if y'all think he is or if y'all think he not. Twice because I need I need two votes to say he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's let's y'all I'll let y'all vote on that. But um yeah I I, I would have to disagree. No, it's a no for me. I think it's Quite out now. Period. period. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I do agree with him that this, this king and queen stuff is being labeled is being thrown out there too quick. Like, you know, Nikki says she's the queen of female rap and, you know, now Cardi's coming to snatch a crown. Like all is, it's too soon. Like how y'all getting these labels so quickly? Like what, you know, with the whole female thing. I don't like I don't like when that happens within female rap. I'm gonna tell you why. Because when it when it when it, when it's happening, it's not five, six, seven, eight, nineteen, twenty-five female rappers doing it. It's only two of them doing it at a, at a time. Yeah. So to me, that to me, that's it's like it's like it's like why, why it's like it's it's the the y'all the, the 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 pop population of y'all being out in the limelight and being in the forefront is so small. Why? Why do you do this bashing back and forth? It should be more embracing to try to empower each other to to make that genre, or if if you know what I'm saying if I'm if I'm even politically saying it correct, uh, female female that genre to, to a higher, higher plateau, so there'll be so it'll be more to eat from. So it'll be it'll be room for more for more female rappers to to take the forefront. I yeah. just I don't get this just generation. Well, we had we had Missy Elliott. We had you know what I'm saying. Rod Digger. We had we had a bunch of female rappers that was going was going out of that one time. Nowadays it'd be like one or two, and you like wow, that's it. Yeah, but I you know what? In the, in the underground, but in the limelight. Right, right. You know what? We we gonna let the poll speak for itself. We gonna let the fans answer that question. I want to move on to um. I was just doing some overlooking on YouTube and I came across um, Charlemagne the God, some information about him. Okay. Now, you know, Charlemagne the God is known for having a plethora of guests on the breakfast cup where he kind of like disrespects them, you know, shade to them, all this stuff. Okay. Now, uh, what I ran across was very interesting. What I did not know about Charlemagne the God was that he had an open case with a 15 year old, a rape case. Did y'all hear about that? Yeah. I, I had. yeah. He, apparently, he was giving the 15 year old, like, getting her drink, well, getting her drunk, uh, attempting to, you know, have relations with her. Or whatever. Then after I looked at that video, it was another video that he was actually live on the Breakfast Club, and he was—I forgot who was the guest at the time—but he was telling a story about him um, sleeping with this girl. He went and bought some type of liquid or something from some type of store, and he put it in the drinks. And him and the girl was getting tore down. I mean, tore down. She passed out, and he had relations with her while she was unconscious. She woke up the next morning and she was like, well, what happened? And he told her, well, well, we had sex. And she was like, well, I'm, this is what he said now. He said that she said, well, I'm glad it was you. And then later down, 
the road, you know, she was, I guess, completely fine with it. Now, let me ask y'all this. We're hearing that story. Does not that sound like sexual assault? Because she's not aware. She wasn't able to consent to that. So what's y'all take on that? Yeah, a, I mean, damn, it's sex with a, a, a underage with a baby. I mean, I ain't know whether you can twist that and make that good. That's a, she she underage. And well, that well, these are mind you, these are two separate women. Okay, the fifteen year old is a separate case, and then the one the story after that is another girl. Okay, but I mean, it's, but shit, sound bad. It all sound bad. I mean, you're taking advantage, right? Of, you know, another person, especially you not know I me, mean? but yeah, it sound bad. It sound real bad. You're hearing the story. It sound bad. I don't know what it's So do y'all think he should get the treatment like Cosby's getting? Damn. And so she's not pressing charges. Neither one of them are pressing charges. Oh, you said well, the fifteen year old did. The fifteen year old did come okay. come to the light with it. Yes, ma'am. And then you said the second one. You want the rape, want the rape allegation? Yeah, the rape allegation, the 15 year old came, uh, uh, you know, and spoke up about it. The other girl did not. He actually told that story his oh, own yeah. self on the Breakfast Club. So then he told on his self. That means he got a history of that. Is what it sounds like. If I was a judge off an outside looking in and I, if I don't know nothing, just going up what he, he is like, he telling on his self. I mean, you got a history of doing that. What it sounds like. Yeah. Right, looking in. So if. Now, if what, see, so if Charlamagne. Let's say it was um when he when he broke when he brought that story when he he's the one who you know brought that story out with pretty much saying that uh, it's been times in, in the past where people tried to put him in, in positions about trying to put stuff like that on him and how he stuck to his guns and was like well, well well you know do what I gotta do to go to court and we'll handle everything here. Y'all do what you my wife, my wife's gonna stand behind me. My daughter's gonna stand behind me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that, I'm not that type of person. So you've seen the whole whole situation through. So I was like, that's, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? So, so, I, mean, I, I don't want to just call that man, you know, a predator. Right. Right. I, I got you, bro. Yes, sir. If he follows so, the he's still, he's still in the forefront of the whole situation. I mean. Yes, so look, we got a special guest that just popped in, Mr. Tony Jordan. How you doing, Mr. Jordan? I'm good. I'm good. How y'all doing tonight? Doing all right. Yeah. Doing all right. So we were just talking. We was just talking about um before you joined us, um Jacquees and him laboring himself, the the king of R and B. What's your take on that? Yeah, I um. Uh... Yeah, I heard his comments, and I guess he was basically saying for his era. But um, yeah, that's a label that I I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't with him. Cool, I, I I can see that. I can see that. So, do you think that he can ever live up to that label, or do you think it's just a no go for him? Um, I mean, you know, I'm not a big fan of his music. I mean, to me. A lot of it uh, sounds like, you know, uh, I've heard before is not a, a lot of originality or creativity for me there. But I mean, he, you know, he's all right. I don't think, um, and uh, this is just, you know, my opinion from, uh -huh. from and what I've heard. I don't think he can equate to the Michael Johnson or, um, you know, any other. Um, you know, artists that's been before him, labeling themselves a king or you know things of that nature. I just, I just don't hear it. I don't see it. True. All right, I'll give you that. What, what do y'all have to say to what Mr. Jordan just said? I mean, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree at all. It makes yeah. sense. So cool. All right, let me ask you this, Mr. Jordan. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty of things here. So, could you go ahead and explain to the fans and the viewers who don't know who you are, who you are, and you know, how you got in the industry? Um, well, um, I, really, um, I would say professionally, um, since 99, uh, I'm really a, a purveyor of music, period. Uh, I used to play the corner back in the day. Um, Played the drum, 
I just love music, period. My mother used to sing back up for time. My cousin, who I used to know, he wrote four number one hits for Chaka Khan. He wrote a number one hit for Herbie Hancock. He wrote for Jody Watley. He discovered Mariah Carey. He was on American Bandstand. He was on um, Soul Train. He wrote the song uh, Beat Street. Uh, I mean, uh, Break of Revenge for the movie Beat Street. He actually was like uh, one of the first to do um, his name is Gavin, Christopher, G-A-V-I-N, Christopher. He's uh-huh. uh, so he's a really, he's really a legend. Uh, a lot of people know who he is, but, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, just got in the game. Um, basically, um, I was a leader by the and um, I started uh, working with entertainment lawyers. So, uh, you know, I had, you know, uh, my brother, my cousin, you know, always happening and doing their thing. And I started doing their paperwork and things of that nature. So that's basically how I was managing artists. I started managing family first. But um, you know, yeah, I you know, I started going to shows with some of the entertainment lawyers and got the opportunity to start managing some of those artists. Uh, one of the very first artists that I met was a good dude. His name was Eric P A R I Delane. He's uh, from Chicago, but this uh, gentleman, uh, he's still out here in the day, but he's one of the pretty artists, and I know that was with a group that went behind it. Okay. So, and I learned uh, a lot from my cousin when he came back from, uh, from Paris and he let me manage when he came back from the back home about four years ago. He passed away since then, but, um, you know, I learned a lot, and, um, you know, basically, like I said, um, Came into the artist, uh, came into the game, booking artists as well. That's kind of how I came about managing Jazz Odie Originator. Um, I was booking him for a tour. We hit it off, and um, you know, he liked what I was bringing to the table as far as sponsors and things of that nature. And you know, we uh, he asked, you know, asked could I manage him, and you know, it, it was on the top and everything. Cool, 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 cool. So let me ask you. Um, the whole Jazzo situation, because I just noticed recently him and Jay were recently united. How did that all come about? Uh, well, let's talk about, uh, you know, I was basically watching uh, last year, Jay-Z made amends with a lot of people that uh, he was, let's say, you know, fell out with him, with him with so-called beef or whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, I just felt like the time was right him and Jazz to get back together. You know, he had got back with the locks. He had made a man with Jim Jones. He had made a man with a lot of, um, you know, people that, um, you know, like I said, that he had had bad blood with in the past. So um, I actually uh, basically just called Henry Jones up at Rock Nation. I was booking a, um, I was booking for a tour at the time, and um, I was calling Lenny Santiago, who was his uh, manager. Yeah. So, uh, I just had the board. Uh, I asked for Emily Jones. They sent me over, put me over to him, and um, I talked to him for about an hour. Introduced myself, told him that I managed jazz. Um, you know, told him that um, you know that the jazz really didn't have no, no hard feeling towards Jay. I told him I had been managing jazz for seven years, and we were brothers. You know, more than anything, and um, you know, told him that um, you know um, that he loved those guys, him and Emory as well, because. Uh, he grew up with Emory, you know, in Marcy too. So I knew uh I knew there wasn't no beef or no bad blood. Like Jazz really proud of Jay-Z because he helped, you know, he helped get on, he helped, you know, style everything Jay-Z does is Jazz O. If you don't know the history, you ever heard these guys rhyme, you listen to Jazz O, you listen to Jay Z, you listen to Jay Z, you listen to Jazz O. So um, you know, I called Emory up, uh reconnect with him and Jazz O. And uh, after that, me and Emory stayed in touch. So I told Emory, I say, look, man, um, you know, let's get these guys back together again. Um, you know, we, I wanted to do it for hip hop. I wanted to do it for the culture because we need that unity. We, the bigger, the bigger names and the bigger artists that can come together, that's that is so much better for the culture. So, you know, uh, Emory say, yeah, let's do it. He said. Um, you know, we were jazz, uh, you know, he gave me tour dates. I'm looking for the full four four concert. So then we'll be in Chicago at this particular time. And um, 
I would have jazz in. And, um, you know, at first I didn't even tell jazz, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, um, like I said, uh, and jazz came down, flew him out, and uh, we went to the concert. And that's when, um, you know, um, we took the pictures with him. And, you know, I had him take jazz to the back by himself to meet Jay. Because I didn't want it to look like nothing but them just, you know, the whole thing was one thing I wanted it to be about them brothers getting back together, and that was it. So uh, we went on to that, we went in the back. I met Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Shook his hand, told him who I was. Jazz introduced me. Uh, him and uh, No ID and Jazz, uh, Jay Z took the picture. And that was it. The next day, you know, I posted the shit and um, it kind of broke the internet. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, I did it for hip hop, did it for the culture. I did it for Jazz because I wanted to get him back with his mans. I wanted to get him back with his brother. Jazz was my brother. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to get him, you know, back in the element. Right. That's dope. That's dope. Swag, you had a question for Mr. Jordan? Um, <clears throat> oh, let me pull, let me pull questions up. I, I was listening to that story right there, man. That was that was deep, man. That was real. Yeah, for that was deep. That was, that was real for hip hop, for real, for real. So did Jay? Well, while he's looking for that, um, quick question. So, how what, did Jay embrace Jazzo? Well, I mean, how did that the meeting go? Oh man, it was number love. It was a. Uh, it was number love, and it was it was crazy because as we walk into the stadium to get to get to Jay, you know, we meeting um, man, uh, my man Le- Leroy Hawkins, who I used to manage, who's on Chicago uh, PD now. You know, we went into we went into Terrence Howard from Empire. We also ran into um, the lawyer. Uh, I can't his name exactly, but we ran into Empire. Uh, we ran into Judge Mathis. It was a whole bunch of stars in the, in the, in, you know, in the building that night. And when they saw jazz, they automatically knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Irving Body Brother was there. Chris, he was there. It was a lot of, it was a lot of big people in the house uh, that night. So, uh, you know, when they got back, there was number love. For those girls and, um, you know, and, you know, Jay and Blake Jeffers, but. I don't know if uh, you got uh, the other uh, picture. Um, they also had a meeting in Detroit uh, back in August, and that meeting was, you know, they were kind of, you know, everything was like, you know, they had uh, exchanged numbers and all that, so they had been in touch up until the meetings up until August, so everything was really on a good, both, both in good places, for real, for real, because they both were shocked at me because I don't think it really told Jay, what was going on? And, and like I said, I didn't tell Jay for the last bit. Cool, 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 cool. Swag, you had something to say? Yeah, so being involved with this culture for so long, uh, did you ever think that the culture would evolve as far as it has in this short time since, uh, since you know, first coming into the game? Yeah, you know, um, when hip hop first started out, you know, um, it was all about, you know, the culture, the movement, the essence, the coming together. Um, I be- I really believe God blessed us uh, with this music, just the culture period, because I'm, you know, I'm a b-boy by nature, and we used to battle cats in other neighborhoods so we wouldn't be fighting, you know, and, and killing each other and things of that nature. So. I really, I really believe this music was brought to bring us together. And I knew once the music was gentrified, meaning it was marketable, it was selling, you know, you got all these companies and, and, and things of that nature in the, you know, with the hands in the pots now. So I knew the music would grow. I just was hoping that it grows in a positive way where it's uplifting us. Because I believe this music was given to us so we wouldn't have to rely on punching nobody else's clock. We can make our own way in the world. We can use our natural born talents to make it. So um, I, I, I knew it was going to evolve because one time my cousin, you know, he told us a story where he was making one of the first hip hop beats for uh, Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel. And, uh, you know, they was like, he was, you know, telling them this music is not going to last. It's a fad and things of that nature, but you know, it, it, it's just like the same thing they said about you know jazz and blues and things of that nature. So 
you know, um, music touches people's soul. So anytime you get something that does that, it grows immensely through different cultures. So I knew the music was going to grow. I knew a lot of people was going to catch on to it where I knew hip hop was going to evolve probably faster, more faster than any other music. And it has shown that right now, hip hop is really everything. Everybody want to do hip hop. Hip hop is running the, um, you might not believe it, but hip hop is running the sales right now. Hip hop is it's off the charts. Hip hop music runs everything in this industry, in this world. So it's nothing that hip hop hasn't touched and is not embraced. You got, you know, cats doing plays on Hamlet. It's all hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, that's where we are right now. Josh, did you have a question, guys? Yeah, I got a couple of questions. Go ahead, go ahead, by all means. Okay, okay. Uh, if you had a chance today to have a conversation with a twenty with a twenty one year old version of yourself, mm. what advice would you give yourself? And uh, what what is something you would have told yourself to invest in? It's a great question. Uh, yeah, that is a great question. Uh, and what I tell what I tell people all the time is experiences get you to where you are right now. So um, I wouldn't I don't even think I would change anything. Um, I think probably what I would probably do more of if more than anything now that I know social media and things of that nature is marketing and promotions. PR is one of the biggest things. You know, right, you know, right now these labels are watching your numbers on all of your social media, your Instagram, your YouTubes, your Twitters, mm-hmm. your books, the likes you get because those numbers equates to dollars and cents. Okay. If you are an artist and you're talking about making this your career, you want to do this seriously, you have to remember that when you make a decision, you are a brand and you are a company off the bat. Mm-hmm. Even if you ain't Got employees and all that. You are a brand in a company. And you have to think like that because your fan base and your music is what these people want to attach themselves to because they can market and promote whatever product they have to your fan base. And without you, they wouldn't be able to connect to a type of fan base that you're offering them, which is really everybody because I can I know old people that listen to hip hop. And not the old people, I'm 46, so I'm talking about people that's 70s and 80s. You know, it's the type of music out here that can appeal to everybody. I got hip hop that my grandmama can listen to. So, you know, um, yeah, I think what I can tell the younger me is to um, basically, you know, start to marketing and PR, you know, early, you know, focus on that. You know, more than anything, depending on if you're an artist and things of that nature, but your marketing and your PR and things of that nature. Um, and, you know, just basically learning the game from the inside out and not the outside in. You know, know your paperwork, know your contracts. Um, you know, that's kind of what saved me in this game because can't nobody put a wheel on my house and have to read contracts, proposals. I put that shit together myself. So you can't just not work with all type of entertainment lawyers. So, you know, you're not going to be able to put a fast one on me. Um, like I say, I work with billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. So I learned, I learned that I'm like a sponge, man. I try to surround myself with the best and so called knowledge like a sponge and apply it to whatever I'm trying to do in this business. Great answer. Great answer. Uh, all right, you you have been around many cele- many celebrities of all sorts and icons as well. Who would you say left the biggest impre- impression on you as a person, and why? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have to say um, Chuck D, um, KRS One, you know, people like that. You know, even though I've been with Jazz O um, and Mommy Tim on, on a big level, he's been a, he has a, he's had a big impression on my life too, but. As far as um, you know, conversations that I have with like Chuck D, Chuck D is like a mentor to me. I call him up, you know, he gives me advice all the time, he keeps it real. But, um, you know, like, you know, Taurus wanted Chuck D, man, those brothers are super deep. 
Um, you know, they 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 kind of challenge you um, from a different perspective and from a different angle of life. Uh, you know, they make you man up. You know, they make you man up to be responsible for what you do and talk to it instead of using the second time. Mm. Cool, cool. So let me let me ask you this. Um, now, you, you could choose not to answer this question. I'm, I'm still going to ask it, though. Um, do you, what actually led to the separation of you, Jazzo, and Jay? What, what happened there that divided them for so many years where they were in the press kind of like indirectly bashing each other? Well, that basically, um, you know, it all came down to when um, Rockefeller was formed and they offered Jazz the deal. Um, it wasn't about the money. It was about who was controlling the budget, where was he going to be working at, and who was giving him an advancement in his pocket because they were trying to lock the brother down basically on an exclusive deal. And if you're not familiar with that meaning, he can't record with nobody else. He can't produce nobody else. They just want him to fuck with the rock and that's it. So he's cutting out a whole bunch of other opportunities. This man is a platinum. When I say platinum, Jazz O is not only an artist, but Jazz O is a platinum producer for, he produced MOT. He produced for Eric B. and Rock Kim. He produced for um, The Locks. He's produced for Jay Z. He produced for some of everybody. So for you to take that away from him, you, you're not allowing the man to eat, especially if you're not giving him an advantage. So, you know, uh, basically, he said they were treating worse than other record companies were treating him. He was getting away from everybody else, but, you know, he was saying that they were the type of dude that he wanted to lock them down, just wanted, you know, and didn't want him to work with no one else because they had projects back to back. You saw the artists that they had in the rock. So they wanted to lock them down and just wanted to make him exclusively the rock, and that ain't what he wanted to do. And then, like I said, no one was trying to give him an advancement, and no one was trying to tell him who controlled the budget. And Jay and Jazz said this out of his mouth. You know, Jay Z and Dane might have been scapegoats. You dig what I'm saying? Because it was other, it was other people over there pushing buttons. But you know, that's basically what it boiled down to. Hmm. So after he didn't take the deal, you know, they was going to start different songs and shit like that. But, you know, if you're a man, you want to be your manhood, especially if you're nicer than these niggas, and he was. Right. That's deep. That, that's, that's actually, I mean, I don't blame him. If <laughs> I mean, if that's what the situation is, I really don't blame him. Um, Swag, you had something else you wanted to ask him as well? Um, man, I mean, if you could... Uh, if you don't mind, you, you, don't, you don't have to answer if you don't want to as well. Uh, I know you've been uh, you you've been around a bunch of celebrities. You've been you know to different parties and we'll, we'll, if you could bless one story, something something that happened and that, that just blew your mind, like wow, like wow, this this, this you know this like this world was real. Uh, well, if you asking about like the Illuminati and no, shit. No, 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 no. I'm talking about that. Anything that just blew your mind. Anything that blew your mind, and you just like, wow, that was real. That was a real experience. Uh, what you mean? Like, what type of story? Like, I'm, I don't understand what you were like. What type of what you mean? Like, so like an incident happened? Or? No, it doesn't even have to be. It doesn't even have to be an incident. Some, something that took place that you just said, wow, you know, that was that was real. Um, I, I, um, I can say um, when Jay and Jazz reunited, that was some of the realest. That was some of the realest shit I witnessed. And uh, when I witnessed uh, Eric B and Rakim getting back together, I was a witness to that. I was uh, actually at one of the shows um, to witness them on stage. It's, it's, it's a, I'm not going to tell you the two of guys get down together because you know uh, they've been out here for years and. So to see them not together, that's another thing that hurt hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't hurt hip hop. You know, I just felt like to see them together is is good for hip hop, and to see them not together is not good. But you know, um, to see them back together on stage and 
touring and doing their things. That was that was that was that was phenomenal, bro. Yeah, yeah. See, that's 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 the story I was talking about, though. Something that something that you seen with your own eyes. It was just like super. Yeah. Rough. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. So um, I, I've seen that you work with Raw Digger. How did that actually come about? Uh, man, Rodriguez is like my first I actually started working with Rodriguez to a friend of mine um, who kind of has a show like y'all. He has a, a talk show. But, uh, you know, Rodriguez and certain other artists was looking for shows, and he told him about me, and uh, he plugged me with her. And uh, we've been working together ever since. So I kind of like co-manage Rodriguez. I book artists. I book shows for things of that nature. True. So, so yeah, we had Rodriguez out here. Um, I think it was last year or two years ago uh, at the sub C. She came out here with a young lady by the name of Lyric Jones. They were on a, a tour called the Ski Mask Way Tour. Cool. So, can we look forward to some new music from Raw Digger? Uh, actually, Raw Digger, uh, we're talking about uh, reuniting. Raw Digger has reunited uh, back in the rhyme and the flip mode squad. So, right now, they're working on a new project. Uh, uh, OT Genesis uh, and the whole it's gonna be Fimo Squad versus uh, 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 uh the conglomerate. Oh, that's dope. Now, that is dope. So, how soon can we look forward to getting that project? Um, I was definitely in 2019. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that project should be coming. Dope, 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 dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Did you have another question for him? For him. I, um, um, I'm pretty. I'm. You got uh, K2 here, man. K2 here. You got any questions, bro? I do, Mr. Jordan. Thanks for your time. Um. Uh. Do you have any uh current artists or current projects, or upcoming projects, in addition to or other than Rod Digger that you're at liberty to speak about or that you'd like to uh, mention this evening? Yes, sir. I got um, I actually um, got a couple of local artists, artists that are really doing a thing right with big boys. I got a woman by the name of Big Inky. Um, I have a distribution deal uh, with a company by the name of Tanks. So, um, we're doing distribution deals uh, with artists. And uh, what's unique and different about these deals is that um, this company doesn't take any residuals from the artists like other companies. They let them, uh, we just get off the subscription. You know, when 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 uh, people sign up, you know, to to get your music at the end of the day, we just get off the subscription. We don't take any residuals from any of artists uh, when they earn, you know, from their songs and things of that nature. Yes, sir. Um, I got Big Inky. I got a gentleman by the name of Mac Buddy. Uh, he's coming up real soon. Um, a young lady by the name of Sweet Juices, who's really, really, really dope. Uh, really, um, a big producer by the name of XL. A uh, producer uh, that's from Chicago, XL is known for uh, producing some pretty big joints. He produced uh, the joint uh, with Shauna getting some head. Um, yeah. Just one of them, but uh, XL is really dope. Uh, got another young lady by the name of uh, MC Annihilation. Uh, she runs the open mic over there at the Sub T for, I think, maybe, what, 10, 14 years plus is one of the longest, wow. uh, biggest yeah. uh, open mics uh, that's ran. And I'm talking about Rod Digger, Jazz O. Exhibit some of the biggest artists has come out to see these open mics and rock these open mics. Uh, we've had uh feral months. Um, everybody's been out to this. Uh, Sub T is one of the most, um, uh, let's say, uh, gentle. It's basically, um, it's for hip hop, it's back hip hop, and um, it's made for hip hop. So, some of the biggest shows have been held at the Sub T, very uh, historical event here in Chicago. Uh, we also have um, a young lady by the name of Kenya Henry uh, that's coming out, uh, R&B uh, diva, uh, super dope. Uh, used to uh, sing back up for Dave Hollister. Uh, I, uh, for, um, I've had her open up for uh, Ken Kendra Family in the Soul. Uh, I had her open up for, um, she's uh, coming on, I work with Soul Train. She's coming on and she's performing for a Soul Train Impact event that we do. Uh, here at the school at Columbia uh, College here in Chicago. So, uh, yeah, man, got a lot of uh, hot local artists. Got a young man right now by the name of Metro Block that's really super dope. He's out here doing his thing. So uh, all these artists are basically, you can see them. And um, 
uh, here at Momo and Canis, uh, distribution, worldwide uh, distribution. We're in 190 countries, uh, 240 digital platforms. So, you know, it's a worldwide international deal. Um, and um, it's uh, www.canismajordigital.com. And, um, you know, I own five entertainment companies. I sit on the board of 13 others. I'm the wow. senior marketing executive director for TMG, which is Transformer Music Group slash Universal Music Group. Also work with Atlanta. Uh, also work with Atlantic and uh, Warner Electric Atlantic, which is real, and it's a distribution group. So, you know, work with Sony. I got a distribution deal with Sony Red. Uh, do movies, uh, TV. I have a TV show right now on NBC called Give. Uh, Channel 5 will come on on Sunday. Blair Underwood is the host. We're in our second season. Um, I'm actually the agent for a couple of the producers of the show. So, yeah. Um, I have two questions for you. Um, one of the viewers, Vonnie Vincent. The first question she had is, is there any opportunities? Like, how can any of the unsigned artists have an opportunity with working with you? Uh, basically, we put on showcases. You know, that way I get to see your show performance, hear you, uh, see you. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, Tony Jordan, uh, Instagram, at Chicago Inc. That's D E C A G O I N C. Uh, Twitter, same thing, Chicago Inc. D E C A G O I N C. Uh, just reach out to me, give me some music. And if I like what I hear, I work with all type of different ARs. I actually uh, just sent over uh, one of my uh, partners, been in the game for like 30 years. His name is Edward Fitz. He goes by King's and uh, This gentleman is African and his grandson. And he's been in the game for years. He's actually the um, head of AR for the Urban Division and Universal Music Group. He's tied to Dev Jam and Landscape. Uh, he has a, a label by Culture Nice. That's Culture with a K. Uh, it's on Facebook. We actually have two artists that's been Grammy, that's been nominated for Grammys this year. Off of a mixtape we put out with them on it, four mm -hmm. artists, two different songs, uh, featuring each other, and um, they nominated uh, nominated for Grammy this year on a mixtape we put out called "Who's Next." Um, the second question that she had is if you could repeat the website again. She didn't catch it the first time. You were coming in a little muffled. Okay, the uh, website is Transformers Music Group. Uh, Transformers is on T R A N F O R M A Z uh, music group, Transformers music group, and uh, I'm sorry, trans is with a Z T A R A N Z. Um, the other site is Canis, uh, Canis Major Digital, Canis Major Digital.com, and it's Canis with C A N I S Major Digital.com, and you can check it out. You can check out the package that they offer for artists. And like I said, worldwide distribution. And for those viewers who did not catch it, I'm going to get all this information from Mr. Jordan at the end of the show so we can paste all of this up and y'all have that information for yourselves to do, you know, to utilize. Um, also, I, I had another question, Mr. Jordan. Um, was there any artist that you came across? that just left a bad impression on you? Good question. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna put her out there. I don't wanna say her name, but- You don't have to say name. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say this. One time we did a show with a young lady. Um, you know, we paid her in advance, paid the deposit. We waiting on her to get to the show. She shows up four hours late and get mad. At us because we didn't have time. so and this is a famous this is a famous person that everybody knows her um, was actually uh, performed on the Soul Train Music Awards this year and I don't want to say her name because I might have to book her again and work with her but right. <laughs> she she a trip yeah she's a trip wow. Does that happen often with you, with with a lot of these artists? Do they have that deep? Well, I guess with the female artists, do they have that diva behavior? Some, some. You might you might get some. You know, you might get some like that, and it's understandable. You know, I'm a down to you know I'm a down real down to earth type person. Like I can, you know, kick it with anybody on any level. You know, uh, I'm 
at the end of the day, I, I don't care about you being famous or rich or, you know, you, you make hit songs because we all human beings and everybody need to be treated with respect. Everybody need to be treated, you know, with decency and, you know, right. if you agree to something, you know, stand by it and honor that, you know, I'm, I'm paying you. You did what I'm saying, and I didn't already paid you half your money. And a lot of artists, they, they show up on time to think they because they want them to go smoothly and they want their money. You know what I'm saying? So I try to, you know, me, I like, I was so hurt that we couldn't do this. And I tried everything I could. You see, I had to download it on my phone because, you know, my devices wasn't compatible. But you know, I'm the type of person, I like, I'm a man of my word. I like to keep my word, you know. Um, you know, people be like, oh, you know, you know, you doing that show or it's not big. We ain't never heard of it. That don't matter. These people reached out to me, wanted to interview me. And if they feel I have something that I can share to help people, because that's where I got into this business. I like to help people. Right. You know? And that's where I get. And we appreciate that. Yeah, that's why God blessed me, because I really didn't get into it for the money. I love music. I love hip hop to death. So I really got into it to help people and help artists. And to really put you in the right path, because there's a lot of snakes and vultures out here. You know, it's a lot of people stabbing in your back, too. You know, like, I mean, really, really, really stabbing your back. I got a lot of haters. I had death threats. You dig what I'm saying? Because people can't do it. People can't move, move. But people have a connection. Like I said, I've been doing it for 99, and I've always grown each year, every day. I learn something. And like I say, I try to soak up knowledge like a sponge. So I give it back. So that's why God bless me. It's not it's not my job to hold it and keep it all to myself. Because you 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 don't prove like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. To share. And that's what people call me. I'm the connector, I'm the plug. And it's true. I know a lot of people I can make a one phone call and make some shit happen. And that's what this business is about. And getting the job done. You did what I'm saying? So and getting business done. Well, first, we appreciate you for keeping your word because we know we do realize that you are a busy man. You deal with a lot of people day to day. So we thank you for that. No Two, um, I think that it's really dope that you have dedicated your life to this industry with helping artists, unsigned artists, even established artists, because, you know, it, it's it's hard from uh, just previous experience with us working with a lot of these unsigned artists. It's really hard for some of them to kind of look for ways to try to get their music heard. Like yeah. case in point, New York. If you're from New York, you, you know, everybody can hear your music. There's always some type of outlet, but you know, there's places like Oklahoma or yeah. Nebraska, places like that that don't have those outlets. So, you know, we want to thank you for giving information and helping other people to achieve their dreams first and foremost i want to let everybody know i want to let everybody know that um if you want to you know i basically post everything that i'm doing showcase like a big showcase coming up in kansas city it's called the midwest explosion uh we got artists in kansas city in chicago performing in kansas city we're going to bring it to the same Lucas, things of that nature um, so, you know, uh, I'm always going to be uh, to jump on show. We just had a showcase last Thursday in Wild Illinois, where artists came out with drugs. Uh, artists went in, uh, they won, uh, I think, a uh, two bar verse from Jumping Out. Uh, another prize was a uh, distribution deal for myself. Another prize was we got to open up for Ja Rule, uh, which is actually happening tonight that rule is to oh, tomorrow i'm sorry tomorrow so you know um yeah um i like to like i say i like to help artists and you know one thing that i like to do is pair artists you know with um you know the professional artists that i work with so they can kind of learn and see you know how to carry themselves and, and how to you know go about it because it's so things that's what i keep telling you these these new artists, the, the godies and the six by nine, the party guys, they're not gonna die. They're gonna be one hit one album because the music does not have any substance. The music is not available to everyone. Because eventually you have to grow the fuck up. 
You have to learn and evolve in everything you do. When you evolve your life, your music is going to evolve. Because you can the same thing when you were born in that, in that let's say, at that moment of time at your age. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to be positive, you're supposed to learn, and you're supposed to grow with everything you do. And that better or Oh, you went out there for a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, artists don't, don't you know, they don't grow because they don't learn and evolve and and they don't learn from their mistakes. And, you know, like I say, when you evolve and you grow and you listen, your music grows and evolves. I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So what's some what's some advice you could give to a struggling artist that di- doesn't really know where to start with trying to get their music out there? Well, number one, you need to start their paperwork, publishing, copyrights. I wouldn't even I don't even work with artists because number one, if I was a I would ask you if is your publishing together, and if you said no, I would be signing you to a publishing deal. All day, raping you. That's what they're doing. They raping you. All day. So, number one, get your paperwork together. Get your publishing together. Get your copyrights together. Even before you put out any music, but that's how you. That's how you live. That's how all these artists do. And I keep. That's what one thing I stress. You have to get your paperwork together first before I can even eat with you. Because if not, I'm trying to hurt you, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to basically rape you. I'm, I'm just being straight up honest with you. So we need to get that paperwork together first because this business is about two paper, money and contracts. That's it, money and contract. So you know, we got to get your publishing and your copyrights and things of that nature together. You working with any producers? Make sure they paperwork is together, and after that. Sky's the limit. Um, after that, get your marketing and your PR. The music is the last thing. The music is the easiest thing to do because it's, it comes from the hardest path. If you got passion for it, you're always going to be able to make great music. You know, be original, creative. But like I said, if you talk seriously about doing this, you talk about you want to you want to do this for, as a career. You know, I'm gonna tell you something. Something somebody told me one time when I acquired my first company. And I had meetings every morning. My employees would call me Mr. President, and at first I wasn't comfortable with it. But it grew on me. And that's how you have to see yourself. You gotta, you, you, it's, it's no funny games anymore. You're a president, you're a CEO, you running some shit now. You got people under you that's looking for guidance, that's looking for advice, that's looking for you to put them in the right direction. So if you if, if you think about this, change your mind three hundred degrees, and you will get right with it. So like I say, and, and, and incorporate your name, incorporate your company name, incorporate. You know what I'm? That's that's the first thing you need to do. You know, uh, um, name, all of that shit, because it's the, it, it's it's what's going to solidify you and separate you from the fake. Because when you talk about getting signed from labels and all of that, the first thing they ask you is your publishing, is your copyrights, is your name incorporated, all of that. Because if not, they're going to rape. No. So if you got it, they know you about your business, you know what you're doing, and you're serious. Number two, I suggest to artists all the time. A lot of times they don't take artists seriously because they talk for themselves. Get you a manager, get you somebody that know the game. Get you somebody that's gonna break down these doors and knock down these doors and talk to the right people. And I ain't talking about to the low level people. All I talk to is CEO, presidents, and vice presidents. I ain't talking to nobody else because everybody else is hustling and trying to get some money off you or trying to get a deal. Talk to the right people. Talk to the people that can punch some buttons and move some mountains for you. Not these low level people that's hustling like you. That was real. That was real. That's yeah, real. That's real. Right. Ninety percent of this game is politics. 
They don't understand they don't that either. They don't know how to network. They don't know how to politics. And they don't know how to come together and collab with the right people and artists. That's another thing, especially in Chicago. They do not know how to come together. Artists need to start coming together more, supporting each other more. Because together is the number, but people don't understand that. People feel like you're stealing my sign or you're going to steal my limelight. But yeah. what you don't understand is you separate yourself automatically. People see that the individual, even in the group, I can pick out each individual in the group and pick out what they do well. And when they come to the group, you, you do train, you do like a time, you transform. So people, you know, people don't understand that, you know, that it's strength in numbers, and that if you if you good and you and you confident in what you do, you're gonna get seen and heard anyway. Facts, facts. So all y'all, all y'all artists, and, um, looking at this feed tonight, I hope y'all took everything that Mr. Jordan said in, utilize it. I mean, because you can't get no plan in the way he just said here. Like, he basically gave y'all jewels to get y'all stuff together. Um, KP or Swagger, do have any more questions for us, Jordan? Man, thank you all for y'all time. Oh man, I'm, I'm soaking it in right now. This is, this is yeah, a for real. He just listen, 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 listen. Joel just he just got news on us like man, the Musa just now. I'm over here. You playing for real? We woke you up, huh? <laughs> woke up it, just woke up in the morning just now, like, 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 like this is stuff I've been telling myself the whole time. I guess I just need to hear somebody else say it. Just playing it all the way, playing. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So, Mr. Jordan, let me ask you this um, before we let you go: Is there any current projects we can be looking for coming from your way? I hear you as an echo. What you say? I said, is there any current projects that you're working on that we can be looking forward to from you? Oh yeah, um, I'm actually uh, like I said, I'm getting ready to start. Uh, bringing um, some of the people that I work with here, um, doing showcases, and we're going to be picking out artists and signing some artists. Uh, right now, I just sent an artist over to my partner, uh, King Shakizi, and um, you know, he said uh, Dev Jam is definitely looking for her type of music, uh, maybe Universal, Atlantic. So, you know, that's what I do all day. Um, you know, I'm you know, sending artists music out, uh, basically uh, scouting artists, uh, looking for artists to sign to different labels. Uh, I got a record label. I got other labels that I work with, you know, a and for and things of that nature. Um, you know, so I'm always looking for artists, all genres of music. Um, you know, uh, right now I'm looking for a mariachi band. Uh, I'm looking for, um, awesome. I'm looking for, yeah, I'm looking for, um, well, you know, I like that mariachi sound and I, I want to incorporate it in some hip hop, you know, because once you touch it, this hip hop, so this hip hop now. You dig what I'm saying? I don't care what genre of music it is. So, um, you know, I'm always looking to mesh new sounds and, and and come up with new ideas. And you know, I'm I'm the type of person, you know, fuck that box. Ain't no box. Ain't no inside the box, outside the box, around the box. There is no box. We create this shit. So right. how box? There is no box. That's how I think. You know, there's no problem that I can't solve. There's, there's no there's because I know too many people and I, all you got to do is think and you can get the job done. And, you know, uh, my whole thing is, you know, I try to move different from anybody else that's doing anything because I try to be me. I try to be unique. I try to be creative and I try to separate myself from how they, so from how other a &Rs and managers do this game because I feel a lot of these people are killing the game because we not just going to keep the same power. They want you to have numbers. They want you to have this. They want you to have that. And I can understand it, but we're looking, we're overlooking pure talent, which a lot of people don't even have anymore. Pure talent. If you, if you have pure talent, you can take it and build off of it. But I do want to let artists know one thing. You have to buy into yourself, meaning you have to take money and buy into your career, meaning do the things that you need to do for yourself and don't wait for nobody. With the internet and all this, we didn't even have this back in the day. 
So artists that's coming up now are such privy, you can get on quick as hell these days. One song, one hit, that's all it takes. You just gotta know where to mark it, where to put it, and things of that nature. But with all the avenues, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. And I'm the type of cat that nobody put me on. Nobody put me on. I saw something that I wanted to do, sit back and watch certain people, learn from certain people, and kind of things that I didn't like, I didn't intake, but the things that I did like that they did, I incorporated it into what I wanted to do and did it my way. So, you know, that, that that's one thing I do want to let artists know. You have to buy into yourself because you talking about you want an advancement from a record company. You want somebody to put you a check. They're not going to do anything for you if they don't see you buying into your own career and into your own, your own, what you believe in yourself. So that's another thing. You know, I, I make I make artists accountable to a lot of things that they do, booking some of their own shows, getting some of their own studio, because my whole thing is I'm up here. I'm trying to get you to this level. You do what you do, we meet in the middle and, and everything will be gravy. But I make them responsible mm-hmm. for success that they have for their career. Because this this is a business. Just like I tell them when I go to these boardrooms, it's white Jews and Italians. That's sitting in these rooms that run this business. It ain't us. So when I'm sitting there and I'm dressed just like this, because I feel if you can't accept me for who the fuck I am, I'm not about to come in here in no suit and all that bullshit because I ain't comfortable like that. I'm comfortable just like this. If you looking at me and you looking at my exterior and not into my interior, which is what I have to offer you, the music and the art will fuck you and I mean it. Because it's too many, it's too many of us that don't do it, and we are not trying to learn to do this the right way for ourselves. We should be running this industry. All the puffies and the shit nights and all of that, they should come together and have one big record company where we control the whole and the middleman and, and these other vultures. So they taking our culture and they running it up flagpoles, man. You dig what I'm saying? So my whole thing is I like to empower artists. If you are an artist and you managed by me and you ain't talking about owning your own company in three to four years, you can't fuck with me because you ain't ready. So this is a business. Like I tell them, I take you, I, I'm not the one selling you dreams. I make these artists go to some of these meetings with me so they can see it ain't me. And like I say, it ain't, it's white Jews and Italians that run this industry, that run this, this music game. It ain't us. And that's what I keep telling them, and that's what they don't understand. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. It's, it's, it's two different levels to this. And I tell them, if you don't check, it's, it's check. And if you're talking about doing this for longevity, you have to have all your ducks lined in a row, because if you don't, they will rape you. And that's real tough. I know that's right. I know that's right. Listen. Mr. Jordan, it came through and dropped some damn jewels all over. Well, they're like, I'm just catching them. He dropped them okay. too. <laughs> you know what I'm so, he, so he got Martin Luther King industry on our asses real quick. I know that's right, Mr. Jordan. You better get ahead now. And everything he said was packed. Remember, we had this conversation before about right. our people do not run the industry. And it's true. As long, And we started it. Like, it's crazy. We gotta do better. We it's gotta our, do better. People making money off, off their off our hearts, they earn, you know, tears and everything. People making making money off of us, and we ain't and we ain't making the majority of the money. Right. Right. And you don't need a label these days. That's how sweet this shit is right now. You don't need no record label. All you need is a distribution deal. You need your PR together and your marketing and promotion together. And all you need is drive and determination. I don't take no for an answer. That's how I get a lot of shit that I'm very persistent. People get like, you know, I make people tired of me. Because either it's a yes or no, that's it. Because I know I have something to offer. So I don't, I don't give up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, if I got to kick the motherfucking dough down, that's what I'm doing. You dig what I'm saying? So I take what I want and I claim what I want through God because I help. I know I, I, know I got the purest intentions. And, and, and it's all positiveness. 
So I know what I want. I know God will bless me. All I got to do is put my mind to it and go get it. Yeah. I know that is right. You better listen. You do you need to be out here on these corners teaching these these brothers that, Mr. Jordan. You know, I got a foundation called You Can Come to Change. You know, and um, uh, you know, we try to. What we do is we give back the jewels that they've been taking out the schools, like art, music, things that we that we took to express ourselves to help us find out who we really are. So we try to give that back to the kids, and I bring in like the Eric Sermons, the Jazzos, you know, people who teach class and people that's been done it. So um, you know, we teach um, spiritual classes because we mentor. You know, not just the kids, but the families, but the parents as well, because they can boss too. You know, this this, this shit is needed them too. All this shit right. that's going on, you know, with these kids today is totally different from how they grew up and how from I grew up. You know, it's totally different. So, um, you know, we try to you know mentor them too, and um, you know, we just try to like I say, give back to the community and to the kids. You know what they missing out of the schools? Um, like I said, with the art programs, the music you know, uh, athletics, things of that nature, you know, that, that encourage kids and help kids find out who they were and what they wanted to be, you know, as far as um, the arts, you know, so. That's dope. That is dope as hell. Dope. Um, did you guys, either one of you guys have anything else for Mr. Jordan before we wrap it up? Uh, this, this this about the nonprofit organization. What was the uh, the name and the website again, please, sir? It's a youth for positive change. And uh, YFPC.com or youth for positive change.com. Yes, sir. It's on Facebook as well. Uh, big shout out to uh, Dr. Simpson, um, who is the um, the founder and uh, who's basically uh, my mentor. And, um, you know, she's, um, you know, been doing this for years. So, um, you know, I want to thank her as well. Rogers. So, Thank you. Um, Swagger, did you have anything for Mr. Jordan? I, I, have, I don't have any more questions. I, I just wanted to, you know, thank you for coming on, thank you for coming on the show again and uh, yeah, news, man, like world, like yo, we needed that. I, yeah. I, I don't know if you can see the, well, I don't think you can see this, but the comments that have been on the screen, everybody's been, been been chiming in saying thank you. I needed that. Yeah. Dropping jewels like for real, like yeah, yeah. We and mind that. you, these are a lot of unsigned artists that are coming in right now that follow the show. And you know, everything you said, you just gave them that extra push. You put that battery in their back to get on their shit. Well, so they needed like that. Because a lot of artists, you know, uh, they need the encouragement, they need to hear the, you know, that somebody is out here really pulling for them and not trying to just take from them. Um, right. You know, I used to be an artist myself. I used to be a DJ. I'm a B-boy. You know, I, used to, I, I do hip hop. I used to be a graffiti artist, all that shit. So I love the essence. And I love what hip hop was supposed to do for us, which we were together. And, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm always just going to keep it real. And, you know, like I say, I try to encourage artists to push them, you know, uh, and really get them, you know, just to focus on the main that's going to help them and not hurt them in the long run. A lot of these cats been running around in circles, been doing shit the wrong way for years. And, uh, you know, got people out here that's, that's really just trying to get something out of them, you know, their, their, their music and make money out of them and not really help them for longevity in the run. Right. I agree. Well, Mr. Jordan, we want to thank you again. It was a pleasure having you on here. You being so honest and open and, you know, dropping jewels and, you know, just just a breath of fresh air you was as a guest. So we want to thank you yeah. for one. Um, also, two, you got, you got, you got keep to doing back. what you're doing because a lot of artists out here need more people like you in the industry. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know uh, I'm going to definitely, I'm definitely, I'm going to definitely reach out to a couple of different um, people that I'm working with in the industry. Like my dude, King, King, I can have him come on here and go in depth about, you know, um, who you know, he's basically uh, produced and who he's put in the game and the thing he's done. Like I said, he's a over um, 
over at uh, Universal Music Group, or he works with Atlantic. Uh, he works with Warner. He works with a lot of Def Jam. He works with a lot of different labels just because of his history. Uh, you know, he been bothered being his grandfather, and um, he's with Zulu Nation, and he's been in the game for years. And this is a gentleman that uh, um, he was mentored, and um, he had apprenticeship with both Barry Gordy and uh, ah, what's the uh, uh, um, Quincy Jones. So this dude, yeah, this dude is super duper deep. I learned a lot from him, and like I say, um, I can definitely maybe set up an interview with him as well. Yeah, that'll be dope. Just so these, you know, these artists, these rappers, these singers, country, everything in between that follows our show and that we support and push their music, they need to hear that. Like seriously, they need to know how to go about things, what they need to do, what they don't need to do. So yeah, we're all for that. Okay, cool. Oh, and uh, like I say, um, I can definitely, uh, everybody check me out. Like I say, Facebook, Tony Jordan. Uh, you'll see a picture of uh, me and uh, Method Man. And then in the background, it'll be a Chicago uh, logo. And I uh, post uh, pretty much, you know, uh, what city I'm coming to. So we're doing um, this uh, Sunday, I'll be with the Locks. I got a show with the Locks at the House of Blues Sunday uh, here in Chicago. Um, Saturday, we got, uh, no, Friday, we got Ja Rule in town. Uh, Saturday, uh, we got a big uh, comedy show with Larell, uh here in Chicago. So, you know, uh, I'm always moving, moving through the city. Um, I frequently uh, move to LA, uh, Detroit, Kansas City, Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. Uh, those are the cities that I frequent and file and do shows and uh, studio sessions and things of that nature. So, you know, hit me up. Instagram is Chicago Inc. D E C A G O I N C, and Chicago stands for Detroit and Chicago combined because I was uh, kind of born and raised in both cities, and uh, I run the Midwest. So, you know, the, that's what Chicago. Yeah. Is. But uh, you know, you know, hit me up. Twitter, Chicago Inc. Um, Facebook, Tony George, IG, Chicago Inc. And uh, like I say, um. You know, hit me up if um, I do consulting sessions. Uh, I'll come out and do a showcase uh, for distribution deals. You can say that. Um, I got a booking agency on my own with Wax Off and his cousin. So I do everybody around the globe, you know, so if nobody, I can't do that. So let's do some business. Dope, 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 dope. Is any shout out you want give, to give out before the show ends? I'm sorry, what was that? I said, is there any shout outs you wanted to give out before we wrap up? Uh, man, uh, shout out to man, shout out to everybody that's uh, basically, um, you know, that's, um, that's that's tuning in, and I appreciate you guys for having me. And anytime uh, you need to come back on, let me know. I, I would, I love to. Sure, yeah, we're definitely gonna have you back on as a guest for sure, especially to see, you know, what your upcoming projects you said you have going on, see how that's all working out. So we definitely gonna have you back on. Okay, sounds good. I thank everybody. I appreciate y'all. We appreciate you. KP, did you have any shout outs you wanted to give out? Uh, definitely uh, Queen, Queen, Queen V for going hard. Um, thank you, Queen uh, Queen Jazz for having us. You and Smack done. And definitely Mr. Jordan, really appreciate you. Looking forward to what we got coming up, sir. Appreciate you, KP. And, um, KP, I appreciate the hard work you've been putting in your life. You know, um, I just want to let the artists know, anytime somebody gives you an opportunity, you have to be ready for it. Um, you know, if you stay ready, you got to get ready. And KP is a hustler. Me and KP are working together. You know, some acts in South Carolina, North Carolina, Richmond, VA, things of that nature. So, uh, just, you know, big up to you, KP, for... You know, for, for what you say you was gonna do, and and then and, and let's get this money, man. Let's do it. Right. Sir. I know yeah. that's right. So look, y'all. Um, we will be back tomorrow night for battle. Excuse me, battle rap Fridays as normally scheduled. Um, so y'all tune in tomorrow at eight p.m. for that. Um, also, mon upcoming Monday we having Donny Cable and Rivers back for a second appearance. And we're supposed to have a surprise guest. We're not going to mention that just yet, though. So y'all tune in Monday about 8 p.m. So I'm Jazzy J. I'm Swagger John.
And we will see y'all tomorrow night. Y'all have a good night. Thank y'all. Peace, peace. Stay up. Peace. All right. <laughs>